Hi, in this video, we're going to learn about how for loops can help us repeat code. Let's get started. When you completed our dashed line program, you wrote 18 lines of code in order to get the results we were looking for. You wrote these four lines of code to make one line with blank space after. You then had to copy and paste this three more times to make the rest of the lines. What if we wanted to make a dotted line? We would need to repeat this code many, many times. What if we had a way to just tell Tracy to repeat this section of code? Well, we do. For loops are used to repeat code a fixed number of times. So instead of copying and pasting code to create your caterpillar with five circles, you can just tell Tracy, repeat the code to make a circle five times. This helps us a lot when we need to repeat something many times, because all we need to do is write how many times we want the code to repeat. Making a caterpillar with 50 circles is now as easy as making one with five. Loops help us by shortening our code, which is something all programmers strive to do because this makes our code easier to read. Using this loop, instead of writing all our commands out, took our 19 lines of code and reduced them to five lines. Using loops also makes it a lot easier to alter our code when needed. What if we wanted to make a fatter caterpillar where each circle had a radius of 50? In order to do this with our initial code, we would need to retype the radius in five different places. In our looped code, we just need to change one value and the radius for all circles is changed. Before we can start using loops, we need to know exactly how to write them so that Tracy will understand. To tell Tracy to repeat something, we need to begin by writing this phrase, for i in range, and put a number in parentheses. We need to end the phrase with a colon. This complete phrase communicates to Tracy that whatever we write indented below it is code we want her to repeat based on the number we wrote in parentheses. Let's look at our caterpillar example. We want Tracy to put her pen down, draw a circle, lift her pen up, and move forward. And we want her to do this sequence five times. We write this code by using for i in range five with a colon, and then writing all the commands we want her to repeat indented below it. Let's trace through what is happening when this program is run. The first command the computer runs tells Tracy to move backwards 100 pixels. Then we get to the line that initializes or starts a for loop. We will dive a little deeper into what is actually happening when this line is run in a later lesson. But for now, just know that the computer reads this line and knows it needs to start a for loop. So the program runs the commands inside the for loop from line three through line six. When it gets to line six, it doesn't move on to line seven because this command is not indented and is therefore not part of the for loop. Before the program can move on to any future commands, the for loop needs to finish. The program actually goes back up to line two and checks, how many times was I supposed to run this for loop? Oh, I see five. I only ran it once so far, so I'll need to run it four more times. And it goes back through the commands inside. It does this a total of five times. And once it's done, then it can move on to line seven and run this command. Before we look at an example in the editor, let's learn one new command. The BG color command can be used to change the color of the canvas Tracy is drawing on. To use this command, we write BG color, which stands for background color, and inside parentheses, we enter a color name inside quotation marks. In this example, we've used the color pink, but how do we know which color names will work? There are many colors that we can use. A list of some acceptable colors can be referenced through the docs tab in our code editor. But there are many, many more colors past this short list found in the docs tab. For example, all 12 of these versions of the color blue can be called with the color command. Try any color you wish to see if Tracy knows it. If not, she will not give you an error. She will just default back to black. To find even more color names that can be used, go to the color section of the docs tab and follow the link provided to access a site listing all 140 acceptable color names. In this lesson, we learned how using for loops can shorten our code and make it easier to make adjustments. Use for loops to solve the next set of Tracy exercises.